is the posterior as well as the anterior compartment. Now, um, uh, on examination, the findings were confined to the lower body. I will only concentrate on the lower body. This kidney is the reduced cycle of the SSC is thrown. Flexion was normal by life. It is almost zero. It is normal. Right side is zero. It is about good Immersion was normal. That's on the sound side. This is the white thing. Lower come on the right side. The weak on the right side. The was normal. The was normal. The was normal. which also she is missing occasionally on the right. Those both right. This is slightly less on the right dose. Then it's not. And ask you a dental back test. This was the right from the that's not standing on the right side. It's almost no. This is the gate to the house. Floor it. Plus minus, not very sure. Is it the left side, normal side, to the right side? That is a normal side. I could open it in easily on the right side. So this is the story on exam. This is the uh, patient that has the bed to stand on heel and toes. He could not stand on heel and toes. He cannot walk on heel. CBF would drop as expected. 
Random friction oscillators weak on the right side. Anyway, stand on the but on walking it sags down. Indicate plantar friction weakness is there. So summing up on, on, the, on examination, findings confined to both lower limb. Don't normal the left lower limb and the frail put on the right side. Power right lower limb, grade one power of or one zero to one of right dose flexes, inverters and EHL. Grade four power of right plantar flexes, flexor hallucis longness and inverters. Keep abduction mildly weak on the right side. Keep extension normal bilaterally. Tendal inverters, no obvious abnormality noticed. Left lower limb power is normal. DTR, knee check, normal bilaterally, angle checks absent bilaterally. Sensory impaired pain and touch over the dorsum of the right foot. Vibration and JPS impaired over the right big toe and little foot. SLR is negative. Gate, you have already seen severe foot drop gate. So where do you think is the localization what is the likely diagnosis? History seven years back, this campaign started. And the weakness remains like that. Coda inhalation, sir. L4, 5, S1. L4, L5, S1. Okay. Wait, any other opinion? L5, S1, sir. L5, S1. So you all think it's a coda inhalation? Have you seen a quadrilateral lateral body such as severe foot drop like that? Zero power. It's true, but the uh, abduction also weak. Uh, abduction is mildly weak. See, tunnel back test is negative, and I can do with force, I would could overcome the abduction. With L5 and S1 involvement, you don't you think the abduction should have been a little more weak? Is, is possible, yes. but the, even on the left side, there, there is some amount of weakness. So, probably she has a no, no, bilateral. Left, left side, there is no weakness at all. Absolutely no weakness. But the uh, plantar flexor while walking, she tends to sag on the left side also, sir. Isn't it? You mean, you mean tendon bear test? No, while uh, walking on the toes, the left side also sags. No, no, it is only sagging on the right side, so the walking part. Make your walk. Let us see. Let us see. He's able to stand on the left foot, both foot, and walking. There is right side is hands. Left side, Corey, questionable. Another DD is sciatic. But the sciatic is so it's a good possibility because it can produce such a severe weakness. Only thing is that the hip abduction is again giving a creating problem for him. Because uh, uh, Andrew Hansel cannot be because there is a sensory loss of the. Yeah, sensory loss. Yeah, correct. So Andrew Hansel cannot be, and since uh, since they are wasting, there there should be a long-standing process. Right. Uh, right. Now the usual term is that if it is a mono radiculopathy, it seldom causes significant weakness of any muscles. Because all muscles are separated by more than one root. Such a severe dose of weakness, if you come like a foot trouble, like you always think, tend to think of a nerve in Because unless it's multiple roots, has to be implicated. To implicate multiple roots, you have to think of L5 and S1. S1 weakness is quite mild weakness. So that much of mild to a plant effective weakness should not produce such a degree of a foot drop, a zero degree of a dose of weakness. Are you getting my point? Because both dorsiflexes and plantar flexes get L5 S1 innovation, but predominantly dorsiflexes L5, plantar flexes predominantly S1. So that so you must have seen many many radiculopathies, no? L5 is a very common radiculopathy which you come across. How many times have you seen this kind of effort drop? It is very rare. So yeah, the, the, dose, the, the dose places it's uh, L4 also there, sir. L4, L4, L5. No, L5. L5, dose plus L5. The tibialis anterior is predominantly L5, L4. 
dose reflection, the inverted position. That also mildly weak in this position. Okay, what do you want me to do now? MRI spine. Okay. NCS. NCS. Okay, we'll get the NCS there. This NCS, right peroneal, EDB, no potential. From the, sorry, right, right peroneal is not potential. Left is also mildly affected. 3.7 on the left side. Right TA 0.5, left TA 9.2. Sensations normal, snap normal. Right peroneal EDB FAV is absent. As suspected because amplitude is not eliciting, don't expect to have FAV also on the right side. So, what do you think for the NCV studies? Good. Yeah, it's as if we're adding locally because. It's affecting uh, not only really right side, but also left side is affected to an extent. That is a probably the left angle jack is also absent. Even Andrew Honsel can produce the same thing, sir. Andrew Honsel yeah. also. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew Honsel also can produce absolute. But uh, Andrew Honsel does not come under okay. DD in this patient. Electrophysiologically, Andrew Honsel also can occur like that. Okay, so what else you need? MRI. MRI, as, in, as you all thought. Severe dysplasia at multiple levels. L3, L4, L4, L5, SL5, S1. This is the plexus. I can show the axial cut. This is L2, L3. L3, L3, L4 onwards, it is dysplasia. Uh, is there compromise in the canal? This L4, L5. The lower part, again, you can see the large disc here. Then L phase one, the right side, it is root canal is severely compromised. So, in fact, it's, it's, still, it's a straightforward case. If you look at analyze, uh, I mean, uh, looking at the muscle distribution, it is L phase one, that is all, all of you, as you all thought correctly. But I have not seen such a severe foot drop with an L phase one radiculopathy like this. With L phase radiculopathy, with my less one, unless it is severe radiculopathy, they agree. By that time, it's such a to put LFAS1 radiculopathy to produce such a foot drop should have produced a significant hip abductive weakness. Here, the hip abductive weakness is very mild. So, the lesson is that such disparity sometimes can occur. Some, sometimes the muscle may be predominantly separated by one root and the other. Then only, then only we can explain that. Here, hip abduction got more of innovation from this one, whereas the Dose flux is predominantly L5, less of S1. Would it be due to partial recovery because long standing, no? Seven years. You know, uh, because uh, dose flux, we have not seen the patient earlier. We may not, but according to the history, the, the, it remains the same. No, the, the, the abductor weakness may yeah. have improved, no? Partially. Maybe, maybe. That we are not, we have not seen the patient earlier. We are giving, the patient is coming here for the first time. Okay. But Sir, uh, why yeah. there is a wasting, asymmetric wasting? How can I explain the root lesion? Yeah, the, 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 a single root lesion will not produce any wasting. Only if it is a multiple root produce wasting. Because wasting can occur with any element lesion, wherever it is, anticonsal downward. A single root lesion seldom produces wasting because one muscle has got multiple root supply. Okay, so, uh, if, if, both, no, if the, both the roots are affected, they can go into wasting. And the wasting is only very mild. To get the, the, the calf, it's not a severe wasting as you expect in any other body. Sometimes there can be a hypertrophy also, sir. So yeah, root lesion also can produce hypertrophy. Due to the chronic irritation, can hypertrophy in the muscle. Root lesion can produce. Here yeah, okay. the uh, the H reflex would do any uh, do any. Uh, no, but uh, electrophysiologically, we have ample evidence to suggest a radiculopathy. Snap is uh, snap is normal, so that means it is lesion is possible to the ganglion. Uh, but uh, last time you told sir uh, in L five uh, root lesion, sometimes the snap can be absent also. Yeah, that is between, if it is absent, then the problem comes. Otherwise, no. Okay, 
The absent snap can sometimes occur with the root lesion when the ganglion happens to be inside the spinal canal. But here it is preserved, then it is a problem is not there. Okay. Shall I go to the next case? Yes, sir. Okay. This is a story of a 20 year old female. She noticed numbness of the left foot for the last five years. Numbness means, I asked her whether it's real loss of sensation or pincenal paresis. Yeah. She said no. She felt some, what do you call, woody feeling or wood like feeling on the left foot. No loss of sensation or paresthesia. Similar numbness of the right foot for the last three months. Other is five years, this is three months. Difficulty in climbing onto the bus for the last two one year. No complaints pertaining to the foot. So this is a story. So-called numbness of the left foot, five years. Similar complaint on the right foot. Difficulty getting up bus for the last one year. This is the video patient. Realness are all normal. Small. Kerala. ನಾಕನಿಟ್ಟು <laughs> 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 Small muscles of the hand were weak by that. They could overcome that. Indra she. No finger nose in coordination. In the lower limb, there was no done muscles in normal. Only a good sign. Turn the lower limb a little spastic. I instead thought that she was holding it, but it was consistently become a spastic when both the lower. Again, checked it is up here slightly. It is swinging up. See that lower limb. Slightly more on the left side. Deflection was slightly weak, almost normal. <laughs> Infections are normal. Infection addiction is normal. Infection is normal. Mark, 
knee flexion normal. <coughs> but those flexion was bilaterally weak. Then try it. But three plus two four. Yeah, chill was weak. Hand flexion was good. All that chotta ma. Then chotta. Eight five five. What is chotta? This very particular mark. Flexion is just normal. Mainly weak. ये मार के पड़ी, मार के पड़ी, मार के पड़ी, बड़ी है, बड़ी है, इधर बड़ी है, इधर मोड़ लतों के, चले, ये वाले इरके पड़ी है माँ, that अर्थात हर इस्तेमाल से इरके, आज ये ने वाले इरके पड़ी, ये वाले नल्ले इरके ना है, बड़ी है, चले, इन द कपड़े पे, ये वेस एक्टिवली गुड पावर उपलब्धि Triceps is triceps supine to side table. Triceps is decreased. The upper digit, upper digit. Finger flexion absent. Upper digit. Upper digit. Pencil mark in the upper digit. Knee check was is wasting of the ADP bilateral. Knee check is bilaterally brisk. Our angle checks were absent. Okay. And uh, right in the free left us seems to be up going. Chuma, chuma kore. Left side is seems to be up going occasionally. That is up going. When I mean, you can argue about whether it's correct or wrong, but I'm not very sure. The sensations are all normal. She said correctly. No sensory level at anywhere. Very much, Tane. Very much, Tane. Vibration normal in the upper limb. You can tell it. You can tell it. Is able to feel vibration over the toes. That is normal. Both feet are normal. But one or two mistakes in the left big toe. That mistake she made one or two mistakes. The other thing there is. He said correctly now. This is the stance and gait. This is the way she walked. This is the gait. She could get up from the square mill with difficulty. She had the support of a hand on the floor to get up. So on examination, calves normal, motor no normal in the upper limb, feet spastic in the lower limb. Power mild weakness of neck flexors, arm abductors and biceps bilaterally. Triceps normal power, wrist flexors 
రిస్ట్రిక్షన్ సేస్ పింపుల్ ఫ్రక్ చేసి నార్మల్ మైండ్ వీక్నెస్ అది ఫింగర్ రెస్టెన్స్ చేస్ అండ్ స్పాన్ మసల్స్ ఆర్ బోత్ హ్యాండ్స్ నో బీవే సైన్ లోవర్లియం అట్రఫీ ఆఫ్ ది ఈడీవి బైలాటరీ హిప్ ఫ్లెక్షన్ హిప్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ కొరి మైండ్లీ వీక్ హిప్ అబ్డక్షన్ అడక్షన్ నార్మల్ నీ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ నీ ఫ్లెక్షన్ నార్మల్ బోత్ రోస్ ఫ్లెక్షన్ ఈఎక్స్ఎల్ ఎఫ్ఎస్ఎల్ ఇన్వర్షన్ ఇన్వర్షన్ వీక్ ఫ్యాంటర్ ఫ్లెక్షన్ నార్మల్ బైలాటరీ abductive adductive hallucis is weak bilaterally weak, weak bilaterally tear upper limbs biceps supinate and normal tricep ventral flexion absent but diminished lower limb knee jerk this bilaterally angle jerk absent plantas curry up going on the left side indefinite on the right sensation is all normal except for impaired jps on the left big toe maybe maybe she is got some idea in that at that point of time Homebox is negative. Gate, curry, it's positive. You have to get the gate of pneumonia by USL. I thought maybe it's positive with mild control. Patient can get up from squatting position with one hand support. So this is the story. You want, uh, you want, you want to see the video or findings once again, I can show. Sir, abdominal reflex? Abdominal reflex is intact. Intact? Yeah. you think it just be plus so okay what type, what type of pitches do you like to keep in mind just be is positive or okay it just be plus any other possibility yes uh, sir hs uh, plus is first possibility the other possibility would be uh, we have to think of a b12 deficiency myelopathy myeloneuropathy or uh, these are the two possibilities but the neck the neck flex weakness as well as the proximal uh, lower limb weakness uh, seem to be odd for these things sir the proximal lower limb weakness is questionable because she could get up from the squatting position only with one hand support she couldn't overcome that line don't push i could not get any weakness of the proximal muscles the lower limb but neck flex is a bit slightly weak i could overcome but very great effort but as vital division see the sensations are all normal and the jerk the jerk but మోటర్ Uh, but there seems to be a slight attacks also so uh, we'll let us see the gate once again Okay. What is your impression about the key? Mild is positive. Especially the adductors is positive. The person has HSP is positive. The mild is positive. Ah, that's the point. Positive is only very mild. The HSP is positive. The dominant baby. Yeah, correct. The HSP is always positive. The very dominant. So, even as a, in, in a, considering the neck muscle weakness also, why can't we think of uh, anticonsal disease? Um, anticonsal disease, you mean to say there is no, I mean, there is mild wasting of the small muscles that can. Like neck, muscle, neck muscle weakness. Yeah, but there is no wasting of the neck muscle. That agree, that part, part is agree. That is very questionable. Yes. Yes. 
It's got a severe weakness of the foot. Those people like say CHL and all, inverters, inverters. But the possum muscles are really good for me. And it's almost symmetric, almost symmetrical involvement. Angle terms are absent also. Pardon? Angle terms are absent also, which cannot be explained. Exactly. Here. Exactly. With the angle terms are also absent. In all of them, myopathy or muscular dystrophy. No. No. Uh, What I think was patients got HSM and type 5. That is more CMD type 5. Yeah. That is, yeah. That is possible, sir. It's a yeah. PD of HSP plus. Yeah, correct. That is when HSM and with spas, spas. HSM and 5 is HSM and with spas CP. That is the thing which I had in mind. So, we keep, in fact, all of you are right in the sense that with HSP plus, or HSM and 5, almost not much of a difference, except that the grade of sparsity is severe in HSP plus, the grade of neuropathy is more in HSM, HSM and 1. Here the weakness is predominantly distal, so I thought more likely neuropathy is dominant in this patient, rather than the sparsity uh, causing the problem. It has got a foot drop while walking. We look at the, the way she walks, the sparsity is less, and she has got a foot drop and adductor sparsity. See the way that you put it wrong. Okay, what do you want me to do now? So patient came with these investigations. No condition study, sir. Okay, but if it already came with these investigations, I thought I will show that investigation. Spinal cord, dorsal cord, Lumbar cord, lumbar spine. There is this all this, this done already already from done more outside also in that spine. There is no canal stenosis or anywhere. MRI brain was also done from outside. That also normal. So nerve conduction. This is a nerve conduction abnormality. So that all CMAP amplitude on the lower limb were grossly decreased. Left peroneal, right peroneal, and the tibial pickup is also decreased, maximally distally. The distal muscles are more affected. For example, ADB is much more low than the TA pickup. TA is 4.2, left is little decreased, but the distal muscles are much more affected than the proximal muscles separated by the same nerves. That indicates some kind of a dying back neuropathy. Leg pattern. This again, uh, TA, uh, gastronomic sensation. Appearance are entirely normal. Sensory patterns are all normal. FFs absent in those muscles which low CMAP amplitude. The tibial, peroneal, and the distal. So, what is the diagnosis now? Sir, uh, here the upper limbs there is a wasting as well as weakness. But yeah. the cor corresponding uh, nerve conduction study is uh, not showing any abnormality. Correct, correct. You are right. The weakness is only mild. That is why it is not picked up in the CMAP amplitude. The lower limb the weakness is in, even the ADB was also atrophied. That is also another reason. That shows the dose flux. We in a, in a dose flux weakness means. Totally not the EDB, but the tibialis antigen, excess digitorum long, they are all weak. That is the same amplitude from that also decreased. The maximum affection distal muscles, then little more, less affection of the postural muscles separated by the same nerve. Something like a dying back phenomenon. Uh, so do you get this sort of uh, proximal difficulty to get it from the squat in 
uh, HMS can of course HMS type can have proximal muscle involvement in due course some of them can have to start with proximal muscle thickness more than the distal muscle thickness but there is a very rare but proximal muscle involvement along with this muscle is well known in HMS HSM but almost invariably they have a distal muscle more than the proximal muscle but there is a rare variant where the proximal muscles are more affected than the distal it's extremely rare variant. Uh, so in myotonic dystrophy also we we can get uh, peripheral nerve abnormality myotonic dystrophy not peripheral nerve abnormality they can have a, a, a distal muscle involvement more than the proximal okay. myotonic dystrophy is one condition where the distal muscles are more affected than the proximal <clears throat> but they won't get affection of the small muscles of the hand and feet myopathies in general they do not affect the small muscles of the hand and feet the effect that was production plantar production is taking may be weak okay so this is a possibility so the blood flow sent for click like some sequencing what do you expect to find in that thing this is what the result came totally unexpected one they get spinal cervical ataxia type 6 bar episodic ataxia calcium channel mutation but significance is unset so that's what uh, 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 that is what sometimes you know genetics may not give a clue to us what it is it may give a entirely different diagnosis we always try to correlate with the clinical picture before giving significance to the genetic abnormality sir uh, there seems to be some attacks here, sir uh, some some sort of attacks are common and Lisa to really attacks you or the spasticity causing that. She could walk tandem. Uh, really walking it appears like a um, what something like a bad leg. There should be the spasticity, or like the spasticity. Okay. So really attacks him. And the proximal muscle weakness also. Yeah. That also can be disturbed. Yeah, can also contribute to little bit. Sir, so the other possibility I was considering was uh, tropical uh, myeloneuropathy. Yeah, that's correct. Tropical spasticity in myeloid neuropathy again, the spasticity should be dominant. Okay. The, the other possibilities, as you said, there is a condition called tropical ataxic neuropathy. There, the periphery see it's a spectrum. Tropical spastic paraplegia at one end, where there is predominant spasticity. Tropical ataxic neuropathy is other end up with predominant and uh, ataxia and neurosensitive part. In between, you can have any any combinations. Spasticity with neuropathy. Some type of neuropathy may be dominant. Some may be myopathy uh, may be dominant. So that spectrum can happen. That can go with this condition, not ultra tagarist. But usually they have, when the nerves are that much affected, they could ataxia is much more prominent. <coughs> sensory ataxia, and there will be sensory abnormality like JPS abnormality and vibration abnormality. Again, the stamps are normal. Okay. There so, any family history in this case, sir? No family history. Uh, HMS and usually the history will be progressive. The progressive. Well, no, it is there. Its progression is there. Mild progression. Very very mild progression. The symmetrical onset. The symmetrical onset also correct. That's what she said. But examination find we couldn't find any marked asymmetry. Almost same finding on other on both sides. There will be no nerve thickening. No nerve thickening. No nerve thickening. Yes, so specifically look for that also. Sir, the genetic test is done where, sir? Med genome. Med genome. Why? No, we also used to want to get used to it. <laughs> no, no, there is there are many other places where they do it. I I I was told that there is another center which do I mean which do it much more better than the med genome. I I forgot the name of that uh, center. What are the charges on this? How much is the cost? Clinical exam sequence is thirteen thousand. Thirteen. One three. A C A panel will cost about eleven thousand. C 
Is it going okay, to be sent for the panel uh, citing the suspected diagnosis? No, I don't know. I did not send the panel. Just send a click like some sequencing altogether. So that okay. means you, uh, because in a way that is good because only 2000 rupees difference. Okay. So unless it's a repeat disorder, other things can be picked up like some sequencing. So suppose you are wrong in the diagnosis, if it is abnormal, you can pick it up. But if it is uh, uh, triplet disorders, you have to do a specific map. Exome sequencing will not help. Oh. I am not well versed with genetics, with water, little knowledge, I am telling you. So, so, but the people they say that you not know, even I have I've seen a presentation recently. They say yeah. they the depends on the lab actually. Correct. Yeah, so even the medjom, they, they I think CCMB people were presenting at that uh, conference. Correct. Saying that these private lab people uh, they may be over diagnosing things and all. They yeah. Yeah, you have to lay on them. I mean. We have to look for a better lab or best lab where there is not much of a problem in framing it uh, interpretation. You already said this is correct. Okay, I'll go to the next case. Let this forget about this one. Okay, sir. This is a very, very long story. Okay. In fact, this case belongs to Dr. Aaron George uh, from Fortem. In uh, the case, in fact, came was in Hyderabad initially before he, the case came to Dr. Aaron. This is story starts in 2019 October when his complaint started a severe pain in the left leg, which improved with the treatment. In January 2020, that is three months later. He developed episodic, severe, diffuse headache, which progressed to continuous, continuous, diffuse, severe headache. So, the episodic, diffuse headache, which progressed to continuous, diffuse headache and vomiting, and noticed some blurring of vision, which I is not able to tell blurring of vision. He could not tell any further details about the decreased vision. It's all the past history, the story he came to me now only. He was admitted to the local hospital and MRI was taken when the patient developed headache and blurring of vision. This is the first admission in December 2019, January 2020 in Hyderabad. This is the MRI done at that time, the patient brought with the patient. You can see multiple T2 hyperintensity in the subcortical white matter, as well as sometimes extending even onto the subcortical U fibers. I'll show much more pictures I will show you. This is the T2, sagittal, flare. You can see the hypernensity can be seen in the cerebellum, in the, in the pons, in the middle cerebellum epidendral. Subcortical white matter in the internal capsule region, external capsule in the region of periventricular location that near the atrium of the lateral ventricle. It's actually more uppercut, so in the same picture. In the center of semi ovale also it has become by like more confluent white matter lesions, large blotchy lesions. It's the prior contrast, which means the same, not much of a difference. But the only thing is that there is some sulcal enhancement which could be seen in the prior contrast. I'll show it in the other cut. It's a contrast T1. There is a patchy enhancement, enhancement seen in the white matter lesions. And the, the, the pile enhancement also could be seen, left -hand enhancement, apart from the enhancement of the white matter lesions. It's a diffusion, there's no diffusion restriction. Lesions are early hyperindents both in uh, ADC as well as in the diffusion. 
spinal cord MRI was taken, which showed enlargement of the cervical cord with long extensive T2 hyperintensity in one cervical cord. This is the T1. Dorsal cord related to normal. This is axial cut, showing that the, it's, it's occupying nearly the central two third of the cervical cord. Here. This again, here is only at one half, but below that it is involved in the central part of the cord. As you see in endomodic syndrome or MOG. And contrast when showed a focal area, a small area of enhancement here, dot like in the cervical cord. You can, you can see again here the enhancement, enlarged view. There is some suspicion of um, contrast enhancement of the pia surrounding spinal cord. So this is the, the report. Multifocal bilateral T2 flare hyperintensity is noted in the periventricular subcortical white matter or bilateral frontoparietal temporal lobes, bilateral ganglio-capsular region, right side of the midbrain and pons, bilateral MCP, white matter of the bilateral cerebral hemisphere, cerebellar hemispheres. Cord is swollen with increased signal intensity extending from C3 to T7. Abnormal signal nearly involves the entire process of the cord of the cervical region except the peripheral, except the peripheral rim. Contrast administration reveals focal enhancement of the cord at C5. So, what do you think at this point of time? This time we are not seeing the patient, only the history is there. He has came with headache, vomiting, and then blurring of vision, and this is the MRI. What would Morgan. you consider at this point of time? Morgan. Yeah, that's the first possibility should be more. More get separated. So more when you get separated, means always when you get encephalo myelitis because brain is affected, cord is also affected, meninges is also affected, and presenting with headache, something like an Adam like presentation. So uh, yeah. Other possibility would be a spinal dural AV fistula. But like brain a, is also affected, no? Yes, yeah, sir. Because it is causing uh, intracranial hypotension, causing <laughs> meningeal enhancement. So mental enhancement, I can agree with you, but not the white matter hyperintensity in the patch yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah, that's that's odd. Cerebellum. That's odd. No, very odd. That is a, that is odd. But because uh, it started as foot pain, a pain on the feet, that could have been some uh, nerve root or uh, I mean uh, some tractor uh, root pain. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, postulating the other possibility because uh, that can give us to intracranial hypotension causing a meningeal inflammation and uh, blurring of vision. No, that I agree with you. But the only thing is that brain lesions per se cannot, cannot be. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. And usually yeah. the dual if you put a cord involved, usually lower down, but can occur in the cervical as well. Okay. Yeah, that's the point against. Okay, sir. And those linear lesions looked a bit like GFAP with some leptomeningeal yeah. enhancement. Yeah, the brain, the, that's another thing which you have to keep in mind. That uh, the one horizontal style, which you can yes. see here, this one, some like a GFAP and some like this. Trial and so there are case reports of MOG and GFAP coexisting. Correct. Yeah. That's the thing you have got to keep in. GFAP is one possibility. When you, when you actually saw that thing, this was looking very much like a GFAP. Okay. So these are the possibility MOG or GFAP. Then NMO possible, but less likely via the mental involvement. Okay, so, so now let me, I'll show the rest of the story. I told you this is a very long story. So he was put on steroids and the headache improved on the next day. The visual complaints also improved. He said within two days it improved. In March 2020, that's about three months later, he noticed some walking difficulty with the left leg, but difficulty with the left leg, which progressed slightly over the next few days, but not to the extent of requiring the support of a person. He was admitted to the same hospital and treated, and with treatment, walking difficulty improved, but the mild disability was still persisting. 
properly immature with still steroid again, that is why she improved also. That was the difficult. And since then, he was on maintenance dose of Pfizer. The invest other investigations done in that, at that time were TSH normal, vitamin D low, doesn't matter, TSR 30, hepatitis B non reactive, HBC negative, HIV negative, SLG is normal. I think the blood parameter is normal. I'll only uh, show the abnormal ones. ANA was negative, anti DSNA DNA negative, TSH normal. Anti nuclear antibodies, one report says one in 100 positive. Then color Doppler uh, ultrasound in the arterial system of the left lower limb because of the pain they did that thing. That is also normal. No hemodynamic significant stenosis. The venous system is also done, negative study for DVT. So endomom bog, negative. Endomom, when, when, uh, and uh, bog negative as well as the endomo is also negative. And CSF was done, showed no oleocondrum bands. Then they did a CSF which showed elevated WBC count of 165 cells, 95% body lymphocytes. Protein was also elevated 94. Cytology for uh, abnormal cells were absent. ADA one to put mild if it is uh, is mildly elevated, not very significantly. Acid was positive, basically was negative. ACE was normal. VP finding sensitive of bilateral anti-revisional pathway involvement correlate clinically. That is the, the one value is 120, the other is 115. Mild, mild prolongation. So this is the story at that time. So even though we suspected more, the, then that was negative. Endomo was also negative. Uh, other immune markers like um, for vasculitis was also negative. So, so the story continues. In June 2020, he again developed headache and attacks. Why on small dose of steroid? His MRI spinal cord then was normal. There were no indications in the white matter or the or white matter or the midbrain. And he was put again on IVMB and he responded. So till this time, he was in Hyderabad. At that time, MRI was done, the films are not available. So the, the report, what they say is that the pandemic involvement with perventricular involvement of white matter around the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, fourth ventricle, along with involvement of the brainstem, hypothalamus, bilateral thalamic capsular region, with suspicious involvement in the right, right optic nerve. They are to be demyelinating disorder, mostly neuromyelitis optic. Not looking like multiple sclerosis or ADAM, less likely to be sarcoidosis or infectious etiology like tuberculosis. This is the point. Compared to the previous MRI done on 24 1, 2020, there is overall increase in the lesion burden. That is what they are written in the MRI. This is five months after the first MRI. That film is not available. Then the CSF was uh, repeated. It shows that WBC count has come down to 30. And again, predominantly lymphocytes. Protein was also became normal. Initially, the salivate became normal. WBC has come down. That means that is even though MRI picture is worse, inflammatory markers of the CSF has come down. So it is, it is, in fact, in October 2020, he was in bed of Darren Jones. And I'm copying, copying his notes here in the subsequent slides. In January 2021, Weisslund dose was reduced to 10 milligrams. Then he complained of cramps in the left leg and some unsteadiness, and the dose was hiked up. His symptoms resolved, and at that point, the mycophenolate was added. In June 2021, another attempt was made to taper off Isolon. Again, he complained of myelataxia and was back on 10 milligram and 5 milligram in alternate days. And he was comfortable with 
10 and 5 or 9 day along with my caffeinate. At this point, there was no demonstrable signs in this patient. The MRI was repeated by Arun George at that time. The previous lesions in spinal cord has almost disappeared. So this hypertensity is not there, except for the mild cortical, maybe atrophy of the spinal cord. This is the contrast MRI. This is the contrast MRI of the dorsal cord. This is the axial cut. The cord has gone down to slight atrophy, rather than initially it was bulky. But hypertensity is still persisting inside the cord but the cord is atrophied. MRI brain was repeated. The previous florid findings had disappeared, but still left with mild hyperdensities in the subcortical white matter in the periventricular location. This is again, you can find out the lesion, but not much less compared to what was seen previously. This is the T2 again, the previous epidensity is not seen now. Contrast, no, no contrast enhancement anywhere. So the impression was, this is done in, in Jan 2021, uh, June. Multifocal ill defined mild T2 hypertensity is the deep and periventricular white matter, the white matter of bilateral frontal and parietal lobes and bilateral ganglia capsular regions with beginning of with beginning confluence, no diffusion restriction, contrast enhancement, or mass effect or gradient susceptibility. Findings may represent sequelae of demanation. No evident cord lesions in the present study. In March 22, 2022, this year, three patients on late and Pysolon 10 milligram and 5 milligram mortality. In March 2022, while on the same medication, he felt some uncertainty in the left leg and some feeling of buckling on the left side. At that time, power was 5, detailed brisk left under was extensive. MRI brain spine contact revealed no new lesions. At this time, he was on microfarad 1 gram BD and voice on 5 milligram. He was given IVMP and symptoms resolved. In April 2022, he had difficulty in climbing stairs and could not get up from skirting, so I think a possible muscle weakness. And he was having pain in the left thigh as well. His examination at that time had shown mild weakness in the left hip flexion. That is, he could not he could lift his leg off the bed with any extended, but could not hold it for some time. It is to come down. If one flexed it on the abdomen and asked to hold it, even there was good power. In two weeks' time, his thigh pain subsided, but on walking, he was dragging his left foot. At this ETR and bilateral extensive pain. MRI was then repeated in April 2022. This is the third MRI. Uh, when he developed the walking difficulty or the pain uh, uh, this day in April. Again, no frustration seen in the cord. Brain, again, this is the player. Some lesions are seen subcortical white matter, but just like the previous summary, no frustrations could be seen. Is the contrast. So, known case of steroid response to disorder, present MRI shows multifocal patchy T2 hyperdensities in the subcortical, deep periventricular white matter, or bilateral several hemispheres with the beginning confluence, fresh lesion involving anteriorly in the anterior part of the corpus callosum, and just and left anterior mid singlet carus, which I couldn't see in the MRI. Findings are consistent with the multiphasic demanding disorder. No evident cord lesions with compression, the limited screen, screen study. The CSO was repeated at this time, showed 57 cells, for cells predominantly 96. Protein has gone up now. Initially, it has came down, and the second CSF, this is the third CSF 
done when the person complained. Protein has gone up. Cells has become slightly more than the previous. It is it was 40, that is become 57. Initially, it was 170, came down to 47 or so, then slightly gone up. Protein was initially high, 160, became 40, then became 170. CSO was sent for MOG, NMO, GFAP, which because we had a suspicion, and I don't know, had a suspicion about GFAP and supplies. TV, PCR, all were negative. He responded to IVMP and his leg power had become normal. This is the repeat NMO, this thing which is done. Then NDHCV negative. So, course of the hospital, he was admitted and evaluated. Left thigh pain improved with analgesics, but was still dragging his left leg. MRA brain spinal cord was done. No new flare lesions were seen in bilateral frontal areas. CSF showed 57 cells, which I already told you, protein 170. CSF was sent for NMO, MOG, GFFP, TB, PCR, all negative. He was started on IVMA, MP, and his leg power again normalized. And because he has got again recurrence on MMF and this thing, he was seen to send to he was seen by another doctor as a neurologist in another hospital and they put on injection of Dutuxman. He continued to get, but even on Dutuxman, he continued to get transient weakness of the left hip flexion and knee extension. And his weakness was fluctuating. Sometimes it become more, sometimes it become less. And the last dose of injection retosima was given in July 2022. The other investigations done at that time, CPK normal, ESHR antibody negative. And that is the time when he was referred for a second, another opinion. So he was seen in the PRS hospital in 1-9-2022. That's the bag. It still is the background story, past history. Now the present story is coming. This is examination trending now. Not much. His pupils were normal, reacting. All the were normal. There is no weak that you may could make out. No finger nose in coordination, normal, normal. The whole limb tone is not spastic, normal tone. You would have put it off. But lying to the power appeared normal. He's coming in pain in the left thigh. He put front to the front of the back. He put it in the front of the side. He put it in the front of the side. And then he put it in the second of the second. When he, the pain was entering his flexion movement, just normal, practically normal. Reflexes. Upper limbs normal. Okay. 
observe places sluggish ejet risk bilaterally angle check real set is the way he walk that he brought based if you make out any must city or it is going to hyper access on the left side this is what is this thing he can stand on heel and toes So an examination, tailless normal, tone power normal in upper and lower limb, DTR normal in all four limbs, under plus absent, panda left up going right indefinite, knee jacks are slightly this side, sensation is all normal, thrombus positive, phantom walking defective, eight queries plastic. So what do you think is a, taking the whole picture into consideration, what do you think is a likely diagnosis? I do not know, but I, I want to ask your opinion. So, in that case, other than Morgan and Nambo, there was an entity called Radom. Previously, we used to diagnose Radom, the current ADM. Why can't it be Radom? Okay, it could be Adam only, but look at the presentation, the current Adam. Okay. The current Adam, Radom. Hmm. Later on, only more NMO and the Moldy thing. No, but we are in recurrent random. We can do it. We are not specifying any particular antibody. No, yeah, yeah. no. Only tell you so, many, many, many of them later on turned out to be smoke. Yeah, but yes. random has the random has not disappeared. It is still existing. Okay, okay. So those with the antibody which were recorded in document, we can still call it recurrent random. Yes. What is it? Is correct. It's a recurrent demyelination. So only putting other words, which you don't know what is etiology, but something like a recurrent demyelination may make you recurrent Adam because the, the lesions are very much like Adam. And then recurrent Adam only some 30 40 percent are, are more negative. Okay, so but the problem problem still remains Adam. Okay, but what do you what is he claiming in the problem with the left leg now? He has come with the recurrent buckling of the left knee and weakness and pain. Uh, so what about your sugar, sugar now? Blood sugar is normal, right? even right now. Blood sugar is normal, sir. He, you know, he has got a, he had a drug induced diabetes. 
sir he has uh, some sort of uh, meninges uh, meningitis chronic meningitis correct Prob- chronic meningitis and uh, uh, i would feel uh, still possibility of uh, sarcoid or maybe since he is responding each time with steroids lymphoma also has to be thought of um okay that that mri finding lesion there on that uh, brain and brain mri finding it's Those not are not not consistent with the lymphoma not consistent with the lymphoma no sarcoid sarcoid it's more small lesions mainly in the cellular region brain parenchyma can also be affected but that particular not like blotchy lesions which you see there without contrast enhancement none of the lesions were enhancing contrast except the only one dot like spinal cord enhancement yes sir meningeal enhancement we can get in adam especially in moga yes 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 you can definitely injuries when you can get in adam or moga no problem sir this looks like a steroid responsive uh, condition if obviously obviously so so my question was okay everything i can agree with you some kind of an unknown antibody producing the current day by this but why the weakness of leg thigh and pain he has come in that's why he's come to me sir no matter sir but there is any evidence of any avascular necrosis because of severe so many avascular necrosis i didn't get you please avian hip sir avm avian sir avascular necrosis avascular necrosis yeah yeah that possibility you can consider that possibility or is it is correct but but is it Uh, sir avascular necrosis usually is a hip pain not a joint or a thigh pain that the point what is it is correct no? some days hip joint disease can present to you as thigh pain they may not come in the inguinal region the pain may radiate only to the knee you may be mistaken for l3 for adic reference okay. but here the patrick test everything was negative sir immunological markers like jogren everything was negative sir everything oh and the profile was all done normal so, so the the recent pain could be due to plexitis additional uh, diabetic lumbar lumbar radicular plexitis okay that's a possibility when nature was affected like in this patient type pain sir, was... whole body pet what done uh, sir whole body, body pet whole body pet uh, as a perineal process syndrome that was not done uh, see cpk is normal sir cpk uh, the recently was done normal one while you already done from by iron was normal so let us see what i did now so i sir uh, sir what is your uh, initial impression <laughs> actually i did not know it thought it's a weird mediated uh, cns disorder But I thought it's not only CNS, but also PNS also. Because he has got a peripheral problem. He has got a pain in the man, proximal muscle is affected. He has got a pain that, that cannot be explained by a, this thing. So I thought two possibilities. One, a disease which is causing central and peripheral demyelination. Like for example, Casper 2. Casper 2 can present with neuromyotonia, pain, as well as CNS involved. The other possibility is there may be unrelated steroid uh, myopathy. But um, that's only unilateral pain, not never. And initially also he had pain. At the very beginning it's a severe pain. So something is not fitting with the steroid myopathy. This is the thing I had in mind. So I wanted to prove my point. What is causing is he's got a leg. First thing is, has he got a leg and he's not known. That's my idea. So repeated the CPK, which is normal. And NCS was done for the EMG. So on, on examination, you see in the bed when I took it, take him with the EMG. See, I could clearly see his wasting of the thigh. The thigh was wasted on the left side. Yes. And the cortisols were sweet. How were ejects or missed? It's got a perimeter lesion, myelopathy, plus... It's got some element which is the cortisol because of the wasting and weakness of the cortisol. So examining again to find out whether cortisol, how far the cortisol is weakness. He could not get up from the. He can't get up using his cortisol is weak bilaterally. He cannot get up with the one leg flexed. So even on the normal side, 
on the right side. You are tried on the left side. You cannot do it at all. And with that, both legs also is quite difficult to get them. That you can do normally. Mild weakness and distal muscles are there on the left side. So you are wasting of both thigh left more than the right, weakness of both quadriceps and distal muscles are grossly normal. So, so my first thing was going to Casper to antibody mid disease or it's a wasting and weakness to quadriceps and plate like shared my opinion. So I did what I did was I did the contraction again. So a low CMAP amplitude from ADB, Peroni, The sensory potential are normal. This is uh, then you did an EMG. It's the EMG of the patient from cortisols. There was no spontaneous activity. There is no evidence of any denervation, even though the amplitude has decreased distinctly. Difference. Right from the female side, we are again same, just from the other side. Serum and antibody was sent, the repeat NM1 M was sent. This is the report. NM1 negative, then uh, MOG negative, then uh, the other thing is also negative. Casper 2 antibody is also negative. So this is the story. I do not know what the condition is. So I can only say some recurrent demyelination of it in the central imperfectness system. Adam can affect spinal meningitis. Pardon? Spinal meningitis. Viral meningitis. Adam with the spinal meningitis. So that is very unlikely. Now this spinal meningitis is only as wasting of the thigh muscle. With the radiculopathy, which is not clinically very relevant. No, but this is a long story. You know, it's been there for two years. The currently occurring. Sir, 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 sarcoid, sarcoid, initially that uh, value, I, I see, you know, I showed the AC level, so it's normal, but uh, nobody can say no, just X-ray was normal, there's no proof, but none of the lesions were enhancing like what you expect in a sarcoid. Maybe the CT can give some. Yes, so, contrast MRI spine was done already. Twice it was done. First time it was done, second it was done. Only once the first MRI showed a spot like enhancement in the spine. With cord cell. The cord cell is totally disappeared and become atrophied. And for root enhancement can be involved. No root enhancement, so there's a mild suspicion of a pile enhancement in the meninges. I mean, the uh, reptimage enhancement in the cord in the first MRI. The uh, Bashers ca can it produce, uh, produce uh, similar findings? No, Bashers, classically, this is not the MRI picture. They usually produce spinal brainstem diencephalic region involvement. They can have subcortical white matter, but not to this extent. And all the features are basic. But uh, initially, he had uh, some blurring of vision, headache. Yeah, uh, along with the headache, he had he got optic nerve involvement at that time. VEP was prolonged. Uh, okay.
sir uh, this looks like a, a meningeal as well as a cns environment with the even the optic nerves po- uh, possibly correct. the yes correct yeah maybe i what we are thinking is some some antibody is causing this problem recurrent emanation which we do not know see gfap came later on similarly many antibodies are still be described so it will come later on which affects the peripheral nervous system also because the type pain you cannot ignore you cannot ignore the weakness of the cordyceps with the sparing and the distal muscles oh, where is the localization for that sir is it in the plexus or the nerves the in fact possible distal muscle egaded cmap amplitude but possibly we couldn't say whether it's a neuropathy or a myopathy one emg did not show any innervation myopathy there is no cpk is normal emg is also not such a myopathy but now there is possible Radic- to affect it radiculopathy also can yeah maybe superior radiculopathy maybe Sir, uh, is it possible to that uh, he must be having some sort of uh, uh, HM, I mean, some uh, motor neuropathy? I mean, because is uh, there are wastings there uh, with the CNS environment, with the uh, I mean, something like that, with the central and peripheral, because he has got a element syndrome with the brain lesions and meningeal lesions. But the, that disease is relaxing and remitting with severe, no? So respond, CSF is showing abnormality, which also fluctuates, improves, and then coming back again. Clearly showing a recurrent inflammatory demyelination. What? We don't know. Sir, if we do a whole body PET, we can get some lymph node uptake, and that lymph node biopsy or aspiration can give group whether it's a sarcoidosis or something yeah. steroid response. Yeah, that's, that's a good thought. We can... take that look and do that thing to find out what body is fit uh, to find out the lymphoid enlargement agree sir uh, can this still be a lymphoma some sort of a rat type of lymphoma with uh, multifocal uh, involvement the problem now the mri picture was not at all searching you for none of the yes. the the indians in the absence of contrast enhancement there is no diffusion restriction the type so there, yes <laughs> Sir, but there there is a meningeal enhancement, isn't it, sir? Yeah, meningeal. Yeah, it's not against meningeal. It's going to occur in four months. Sir, was the MRI taken after the steroids was given? Yeah, twice it was done. That's no, it was it taken after the steroids were given for the leg pain? In a, uh, he, he had leg pain. Sir, initially yeah. he had leg pain. Yeah. So, what steroids was given for that leg pain? Initially, yes, that subsided. Then, yeah, the steroids was stopped, or he was he on steroids, and then he developed. No, no. Every time he has got some symptoms, that are in the left pain, we put on steroid. That pain subsides. The weakness also improves. After some time, it lapses again. Pain and type pain come. He again responds to steroid. So steroid was totally stopped. He was not put on maintenance steroids, right? So he was subsequently put on maintenance steroids. So the respond. second. Dip- So the second episode, that CNS episode, was yeah. he was on steroids. So how can we really judge that MRI picture of lymphoma? No, no. See that even the first picture was not suggestive of a lymphoma. The first okay. picture was start uh, was taken before starting yeah, steroids. Before, so before starting okay. steroids, yeah. Okay. So okay. that's right. the first one that was done years back. that in the florid abnormality were all seen when he went there with headache and vomiting so how can one start steroid straight away just for any pain yeah, okay, because you're seeing the abnormality of the mri only you are started on steroid sir in 2020 a left leg pain occurred in 2020 yeah. then in 20 uh, sorry 2019 leg pain occurred and 20 20 the cns symptoms came sir yeah subsequently also he had in between leg pain occurring and difficulty in walking occurring so every time that that improves with the hiking of the dose steroid so that so, means uh, one year difference between the first leg pain and the next yeah, cns right right correct right. but he was on small dose of continuous steroid in between but even uh, one steroid sometimes it flares then you are taking this dose steroid so sir uh, 
sir is it possible that uh, he is having a uh, something like a cian with a cns in involvement no that's really unlikely you know cian it is not the presentation so he developed severe headache and vomiting then burning and vision improving leg pain is unilateral then that's a pain with uh, fluctuating weakness that's not the presentation I mean, uh, some something like a central and peripheral demyelination, which is something. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, central and peripheral demyelination is the correct diagnosis. But what is causing? That's an un- unanswered question. Sarcoid we can think, but the picture was clinical picture or an MRI picture was not such. There is a point. That is, there is a possibility which can affect CNS and PNS in. Uh, Sarco, uh, Sarco lymphoma bed sheds. Yeah. Um, These are the uh, DDs which can affect both, but the MRI picture was not really favoring at all. Okay. Sir. And cytology for malignant cells was done abnormal. That's also negative. Sir, VDRL, HIV, are all negative. All sir. negative. Right? Lyme, yeah. Lyme also. Lyme, 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 Lyme <laughs> we did not do. Lyme, I think, does not do. Okay, because uh, so in fact I just I brought this case only to show that in some cases very difficult to differentiate even diagnose the current demyelination of his genes and PNS. Yes. What we uh, as so Bindu is telling we can do a PET scan, sir. We do a PET scan. Yeah, that's that's and, the thing which we can do. And a lymph node biopsy, bone marrow also, bone marrow, LDH. Hmm. That was that we can possibly suggest that. When he comes to this thing. Yes, sir. Anyway, okay. Anyway, it's a tough case. It's a very difficult case, sir. So, is that <laughs> done for today? Yes, sir. Okay. Good night. Okay, okay sir. Good night. Sir. Thank, Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night, good night, good night sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.